Hi, this is Dr. Bay, and here's Bugsy, and today I'm going to go over electronic structure of molecules. We'll delve into the valence shell of atoms, how to draw Lewis structures, and how to calculate formal charges. So, stay tuned. Organic chemistry. Taught by Dr. Bay. Reaction mechanisms. Reacting to products. Retrosynthesis. Target deconstructing. Molecules. Spectroscopy. Pouring through the sky, triumphantly we fly, give rise to the complexity of mind. Living on a dream across the seven seas, learning about spectroscopy. Organic Just as a review, recall that the nucleus of an atom is comprised of both protons and neutrons. Each proton has a charge of plus one, while each neutron is neutral. For a neutral atom, the number of protons is balanced by an equal number of electrons, which have a charge of negative one. Electrons exist in what are called principal shells. The first shell, which is closest to the nucleus, can contain two electrons, and this first shell corresponds to the first row of the periodic table highlighted in green. And the second shell can contain up to eight electrons, which corresponds to the second row in the periodic table shown in blue. But in organic chemistry, we're mostly interested in the valence electrons, which are the electrons in the outermost shell of an atom. The number of valence electrons in an atom is identified by its group number in the periodic table highlighted in red. Atoms will form the necessary number of bonds to achieve the electronic configuration of its nearest noble gas, and this is due to the octet rule. Based on the octet rule, hydrogen will form one bond to achieve the electronic configuration of helium, which has two valence electrons and carbon will form four bonds to achieve the electronic configuration of neon, which has eight valence electrons, hence the name octet rule. But there are a few exceptions to the octet rule, especially molecules containing group 3A elements. For example, boron and aluminum have six valence electrons in their valence shell. And atoms in period 3 have 3D orbitals, which means they may expand their valence shell to have even more than 8 electrons. Common period 3 atoms that you may encounter in this course are phosphorus and sulfur. Phosphorus may have up to 10 electrons, while sulfur may have 8, 10, or 12 valence electrons. And shown at the bottom right corner are a few examples of sulfur-containing compounds with varying numbers of valence electrons that you may encounter throughout the course. So knowing how to draw molecules with their valence electrons is a super important skill to have down in organic chemistry. Lewis dot structures of individual atoms are combined to produce Lewis dot structures of small molecules, and such drawings are based on ensuring that each atom within the molecule fulfills the octet rule. So one way to draw a Lewis structure consists of five steps. The first step is to determine the number of valence electrons of the whole molecule. Step two is to determine the arrangement of atoms in the molecule. Step three is to connect the atoms by single bonds. Step four, arrange the remaining electrons such that each atom has a complete valence shell. And remember to watch out for those exceptions, especially from group 3A atoms. And lastly, step five is to assign formal charges if necessary. Now let's do an example. Draw the Lewis structure of CH2O. Step one is to determine the number of valence electrons. Carbon has four valence electrons, hydrogen has one valence electron, and oxygen has six valence electrons. So if we add up the total number of valence electrons for the molecule CH2O, we get 12. And remember, this molecule has two hydrogens. Step two is to determine the arrangement of atoms. So let's draw the valence electrons for each atom in the molecule. And just to help you organize the atoms, I color-coded the oxygen valence electrons in red, Hydrogen electrons are in black, and oxygen valence electrons are in blue. So let's connect the atoms that form more than one bond first. 
Since hydrogen atoms only form one bond each, we'll save those for last. So let's first connect the carbon and oxygen atoms together. And notice that there's a shared bond between C and O, where each atom contributes one valence electron to form a pair. Then we're going to connect all the hydrogen atoms. We're going to place the hydrogen atoms next to the carbon atom because it has more unpaired electrons than oxygen. And step three is then to connect the atoms by single bonds. So remember that two shared electrons makes one bond, or a sigma bond. And so far, we've drawn three single bonds in our molecule. Step four is to arrange the remaining electrons so that each atom has a complete valence shell. Since neither carbon nor oxygen has a full octet yet, the unpaired electrons will be shared between carbon and oxygen to form a double bond, or a pi bond. Now that all atoms have achieved an octet, we're going to assign formal charges. Luckily for this molecule, however, all of the atoms are neutral, so we can skip this step for this particular example. But in the case that your molecule was not neutral and did not have a complete valence shell, you do have to specify formal charges. The equation for calculating formal charges is as follows. The number of valence electrons on the atom minus, in parentheses, the number of bonds plus the number of non-bonding electrons equals the formal charge of an atom. So let's do a few examples. Calculate the formal charge of the oxygen atom in each molecule. So recall that oxygen is in group 6A in the periodic table. So oxygen has six valence electrons. The O in this molecule has three bonds to it, shown in red, and two non-bonding electrons, shown in green. So oxygen has a formal charge of plus one, which we can specify with a plus charge. In the next example, oxygen has one bond and six non-bonding electrons. So if we plug these values into the equation, oxygen has a formal charge of negative one, which we can specify with a negative charge in the molecule. So in summary, today we learned how to draw Lewis structures of small molecules. To do this, you have to first determine the number of valence electrons, second, determine the arrangement of atoms, third, connect the atoms by single bonds, fourth, arrange the remaining electrons so that each atom has a complete valence shell, and five, assign formal charges if necessary. And to calculate formal charges, count the number of valence electrons of an atom, minus, in parentheses, the number of bonds, plus the number of non-bonding electrons to get the formal charge of that atom. Yeah.